first of all, people coming to see the church are, are a little surprised, well, more than surprised. They always gasp when they walk in because on the outside of the building, it doesn't look very big. Um, and it's a bit like a TARDIS. From the outside, it looks quite small. And when you walk inside, you go, oh, wow, this is a cathedral-sized building. It's also very slim because the pillars are very um, slim and it's sometimes known as the Greyhound Church, which is quite amusing. Um, but when you come into the church, first thing you notice is the font, which is on your left-hand side. And in the corner is what we call the ombre, where we keep the holy oils, which is a, a, a rather beautiful cupboard. In the corner is the altar of the Holy Cross, and this cross was taken from the convent that used to be here in the parish. And alongside of that is the statue of St. Lawrence, because the convent was dedicated to St. Lawrence. And then you will note all around the walls of the church are rather beautiful stations of the cross. Um, they are, uh, have just been restored along with the whole church. In, in the 60s, um, they restored the church, but being the 60s they decided it was far too Victorian and so they painted the whole church green and the beautiful organ case which has got all Victorian patterning over it and, and lettering was painted over with red emulsion um, and so when I came here um, 12 years ago um, discovered that in fact the church was in rather poor state the masonry was falling out of the windows in the chancel and um, the whole place needed restoring so um, I did ask the architect come in and tell me what we needed to raise and he said well to restore the whole building would cost um, 500,000 and I thought that's interesting because a friend of mine's pub had just been restored and that was costing um, half a million and I thought well if they can find half a million for the pub we can find it for the Lord's house which we duly did so the whole church has been now restored back to its former glory so it does look rather fine at the moment and um, we walked down through the nave of the church it's called the nave from the latin navis meaning ship because uh, we see this as where the ark in which we come into to escape the storms of life and one thing people note about st germans is that it's very tranquil it's a place of great peace and it's very much prayed in because we say a mass here practically every day other than friday um, we come up towards the chancel and we see on the right hand side a wonderful lectern which is in the shape of an eagle symbolizing the gospel soaring from heaven down to us and then um, above the entrance to the chancel is the root uh, that is a cross with the figures of Our Lady and St John and this came from a church in London that was brought down here um, to the right hand side is the statue of Our Lady and behind that is the Lady Chapel which is a lovely little chapel. Going into the chancel we then see the beautiful organ which is uh, designed by Bodley and then we go into the sanctuary and as you can see with the sun shining on the high altar it, it's magnificent. Um, the rear dos behind the altar, that is the screen there with the figures on it, um, was put in memory of Father Ives, who was the first vicar of the parish, who is said to pop back here every so often, though I've yet to see him. But, um, but the rear dos, as you can see, is the figure of our Lord sitting in, in majesty there, um, the King of Kings. And on the, his right-hand side, our left-hand side, there's the figure of Our Lady and um, then the forerunners of, of, of the coming of Christ. Um, and then on the right-hand side is the beloved Apostle St. John. Above the um, rear dos is the beautiful stained glass window. All that was taken out um, ten years ago and every piece of glass cleaned and then put back in again, which is quite a task. And you've got the main figure, obviously, in the window is Our Lord on the cross. So the whole idea is that the, 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 the building should lift you up towards heaven along with the worship that takes place here. The main thing of the purpose of this building is for worship and that's what it's all about. And we restored it with the, with the intention that it should continue to be used for worship for the next two, three, five hundred years if needs be, which hopefully it will be. So there you go. That's St. Germans for you.